Hello everyone, and welcome to this video. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing one of my students' games that we played together. Uh, we played this game yesterday, um, and the story of this game is Black in the opening ends up playing very fast. Not physically fast, but his, he tries to get everywhere on the board um, very quickly, which is a good style. However, where he gets caught is he's caught with too many weak groups that he ends up not being able to sacrifice. Um, and we'll see that. So that's... And then as we end, in, end the fighting, the middle game, and go into end game, he is too far behind to catch up. Um, so yeah, let's look at this. Let's see how that happened. So I'm white. My student is black. This makes a large knight's um, enclosure. Approach. And then ignores the approach. Now, it is true that nowadays the double approach is not as severe. Um, so, this move I have no problem with. Um, I would personally just simply. Um, answer though because the left side is my area of prospect um, and because white has double 4-4 four, four, I can invade the 3-3 three, three on either of these whichever one white chooses if I want to so I'm not really worried about the corners or this side so I would just back off since the left side is my area of prospect again black's playing very fast this opening so he approaches I kick and jump. Um, the point of the kick is to make black heavy, or the stone heavier, try to get black to invest a stone. Um, yeah, that's the main purpose of this. However, the difference is black will be able to extend further um, than he normally would be, plus they're still edging the corner. So there's pros and cons of kicking, as opposed to just backing off. But I kick and jump. Now, this, he does not need to add a stone, but because white played high here, white's going to be better able to attack these. For example, if white had played low, let's say black ignores, when white tries to attack this group, this move is very easy for black to jump out with, because black has a very nice follow-up if white tries to continue the attack of the shoulder hit. Something like this might happen. Um, and Black's, for, Black's pretty happy considering he was able to get a move elsewhere, right? So when White plays low, White's more focused on the territory, not so much the at attacking this group. Um, however, when White plays high, White understands that this side is still um, wide open, right? There's many invading invasion spots. But why wants to put more pressure on black? So because of this, black really needs to add a stone somewhere. Um, maybe here. I, I like this one. This one seems natural. But what black, what black does in the game is invade the 3-3. Three, three. Now what this does is because the new variations, white gets sente now, Black gets a bigger corner, but white gets sente. White's able to extend here, and you can see that these stones, while not dead, they still have plenty of Aji, it's much, they're pretty um, uncomfortable, right? Um, I believe black, yeah, black jumps. This was the move I showed when white had the low stone, but you can see black doesn't have a very good follow-up if white ignores, right? Like, if black tries to play the same exact, like, one space jump, white can wedge. Um, so the best black can do is maybe do this shoulder, or this diagonal, but then white can just um, start getting the points, um, and black's shape is still weak. So, black does do this in the game. I think now, black has ignored, let's see, so black ignored this move, right? One. 
and now has ignored two moves. So I think black should just just keep ignoring. Again, if white wants to try to attack these, black can still... These stones still have a lot of Achi. Um, now I'll show you what he does in the game, and that'll come to my uh, next point that I want to make. Uh, I played this one in the game, I believe. Right? Oh no, I uh, double approach. So I'll get back to my point later. Uh, double approach, black ignored. So attach, or Hane, extend, attach, Hane, connect, connect. Um, white cannot push through and cut immediately because white has his own defects. Like if white pushes and cuts, black can just cut immediately. And white would like to be able to do a Tari down to capture, but black can um, win the semi. Whereas while the stone is here, black cannot, or while this liberty is here, my bad, uh, black cannot win this capturing race because white has this liberty. So white doesn't need to worry about this uh, cutting point, but neither does black. So in the game, I played, so any move white plays here, there's some sort of defect or issue, right? If white goes here, black can play this one potentially later on, which is pretty annoying in terms of white shape. If white plays this one later, again, black can clamp, and again, white shape is, it's not terrible by any means, but it's a, just a minor issue white will have to deal with later. So in the game, I played this one, which I have never seen, but for some reason I thought was decent in this case. It does protect, or it does make this cut work, so if black ignores. Um, now white is able to push through and cut, because black, um, white can now turn this way and win the semi or just play this one and this is a ladder. Now where this move has issues is it leaves a ton of weakness on the top as opposed to these moves right this one or this one. This move leaves a ton of Aji with moves like this which directly threaten this cut or even just a move like this where black is threatening to play this move here. So I play, So the reason why I play this in the game is I'm trying to put more pressure on these stones. Um, so I'm really actually going after these stones. Now, the issue with this move though is I needed to play on the weaker side first. So this move was too rushed. Um, I needed to either play this um, diagonal, um, in which case black can shoulder hit or just simply jump. While even if white can um, protect this cut and be able to cut, black can live by just attaching here. Um, and you can see white cannot cut black off. right? So white would need to oops, Hane on this side and black has enough space in the corner. So this one space jump um, is putting more pressure on these white stones while helping. It does cut off black in the center, that last variation. So black wants to help these stones. Conversely, if black does this one, if white pushes and cuts, black will then cut here. And the point of this is if white Atari's down, right? Black can't win the semi. However, black is able to cut and then net um, and because of this stone here white cannot break through black um, so black what black's going to do is he's going to fix this cutting stone in sente so I think this is the best way for white to do it um, and then extend and because these two stones are still on the board white still cannot push through later because black and Hane here. So white would need to, after this, white would need to extend, and then black can continue pressuring the left side. So usually white doesn't immediately push, but just um, falls back like this. 
So I need or white just extends somehow, which would be the simpler option. Black maybe with shoulder hit and connect, fixing his weakness. And yeah, something like this might be normal. Um, but that did not happen because I played this one. Now what black should do, so in the game, black connected solidly. So this kind of move needs to be a no-no. Uh -uh, because it's not efficient at all, right? Plus, it makes this stone right here completely useless, right? It's not doing much. So where black should play is black could just pincer. If white pushes through and cuts, black has enough um, outside thickness that white cannot win the semi between this group and these two stones. Um, if white jumps, black can now just connect. Now the difference between this is black has taken out white's base, and you can see now black can threaten um, a connection underneath any time. Also black can consider shoulder hitting, which is the move I would recommend, because um, if white pushes up, Black would come up, again, white cannot push through yet because white would lose the semi. So white would need to turn, in which case black will jump. If white extends, then black will connect. Um, now white ignoring would put a much immense pressure on the left group, so white would like to add a move, in which case black could come back to the top. And this would be much better. So really, by just connecting, black doesn't make white force um, here. Also, if white extends this way, black can extend back. Um, even if white hanes and black jumps, you can see it's the same issue as last time. If white protects the top, black can then attack the left side. If white protects the left side, black can attack the top. Uh, yeah, so either the shoulder hit or this pincer, but you can't, you can't, this has to feel dissatisfactory for black. So then I extend, of course, right, um, helping this stone, black pincers, and then I play another tight extension. Uh, the point of this move is to get this group without a base, because right now I'm looking at this heavy black group and this heavy black group as potential targets. Um, so black plays this peep, which is a very bad move. Again, earlier I was counting how many times black ignored here, right? So black, you know, white kicked and white jumped and then black ignored, so that's one. Then later white pincered, that's two. So then white pincered again, so that's three moves. So right now black should ignore. Black should do something like this. Maybe jump. Right? Black, if white, if black's willing to ignore three moves, black should be willing to ignore four moves, right? Oh, maybe white can cut off these stones, but as I'll show you in a second, these stones have a ton of Aji. Um, and when white just connects solidly, there is zero Aji on the, on the side and the corner. And black has just added four, or just made three stones heavier by adding another stone. Um, if anything, I'd rather black just do something out this way, right? Like something like this. This would be better. Um, if white plays from this side, black can then play from that side. If white protects this side, black could then maybe do something like this. Um, again, using his shape. But this exchange is very bad. So what Aji is there? So of course there's this 3-3 three, three Aji, right? Um, so yeah, my the point I was trying to make was after the game, my student was asking me about, um, oh, then what should I do here, right? Like what's the sort of Aji? So um, what he wants is in one of my in my next um, lecture video, he wants it to be on. The, like, what is the Aji on these kind of situations, in certain corner situations? Because um, black can go here, 
black can do this one, or black can just extend, right? There's lots of Aji here. So instead of going through all the variations, just know that black has many options um, in this upper right corner. But once black goes here, none of those options exist anymore. Um, so yeah, pretty bad exchange for sure. And it doesn't really help black either, it just helps white. So yeah, I would, I would rather want to see a jump here, right? What can black build as opposed to just worrying about, oh, what is white building? And you'll see that very shortly. So black goes there, peep, and then goes here. It's a big move. Again, I'd rather see this one because this is threatening these two stones as opposed to this one, which is not threatening anything. White jumps, again, right now these stones have two options. They can go out this way, or they can go out this way. So I'm taking away one of their options, which is going to force black to take the other option. Um, I could have gone the other direction too, which honestly probably would have been better. Right? I can play this, because black played this peep, I can play this move here, which looks dangerous, but if black tries to cut me off, I can clamp. Um, yeah, and black really can't do much. Uh, so I just think I should have done this one. Even if black jumps, I could still maybe jump, or I could jump here next, right? This move is very big territorially. Uh, but this move isn't bad either. So then black plays a super deep invasion, like super deep. I don't know what he was reading here. Um, and the one thing that he told me afterwards is he keeps forgetting about this Hane and Tiger's Mouth, which at the Go Congress, thanks to Inseong Huang, called the Scorpion. It's very hard to kill the Scorpion, and he keeps forgetting about that. So if you're watching this, my students, remember, you, it's very hard to attack these three stones. Um, so I would rather well, one, these stones are in dire danger, and two, I'd rather want to put pressure on these stones. But if anything, I'd rather you just jump. Build your left side and threaten an invasion, right? Because um, I don't think even after you get a stone here, you'd play that deeply. You would just do something like that, maybe. right? Reduce white while building your center. Uh, but this is just way too deep. Oops. Because white just... Uh, caps. And there's no way for black to break through because white has so strong here and these are in a line. Or on the same line. So then black plays this two space jump which um, we were going through a, a pro game before this this teaching game we played. It was between I believe Park Jung Wan and Mi Yu Ting. Park Jung Wan by the, Park Jung Wan by the way is his favorite uh, professional. Um, and Park played this kind of move in a very similar situation. So while the standard move is this, I think he was a little influenced by his uh, favorite player that he played this one. Um, again, it's a little faster. The downside for it is when White plays a move around here, it's threatening a connection across. Um, so it's faster, but it's more threatening. Or White has forcing moves on the other side. Um, and I do agree that there's a better connection between these two stones than if it was here. Um, but I think these, again, scorpions, very flexible. So I just jump. Again, my target is this or this. And then black just uh, comes out. And then I cap. Again, keeping my eyes on this. Um, Black attaches, and I do an extension. The reason why I extend is because if I play this Hane, and then maybe come down, there still leaves this cut. And even if black doesn't cut, black could peep like this. Right? Um, and so I'd like to protect somehow. Oops. But then black would be able to just connect his stones. Which, you know, if they can, if your opponent connects and they don't get many points, it's probably good. But I was, you know, being bloodthirsty for some reason. I don't know. 
Um, and so this would be okay. Um, but I think I could have done this move. Um, because if black pushes, you can see my shape is pretty pretty good here, right? So black would maybe push and then jump down, but then I would get this move anyways. So I did not see the shoulder hit in the game. This was only after I was reviewing this. Um, and the reason why is because by haneying, I'm forcing black to connect um, to his stones, was my idea. Whereas even though if black wanted to, black could keep extending. But again, the distance between these stones hasn't changed, and black is inf inviting me towards his potential moyo. So that's why I was okay with just extending. Um, and then black played here. I play on top of it, again, keeping them disconnected. Um, black plays at the shape point. I think black really needs... Well, if black does this now, white might just give up those three stones. Um, so maybe this move is better. It's there, and then attaches. Yeah, all this... Black's trying to be as light as possible, but it's pretty difficult. Why, again, after this peep, the corner is super solid. I just Hane. Uh, I should have Tari this. Um, and then come down. There's no reason for me not to make that exchange. It just makes Black's base smaller. In the game, I just extended down, and then Black could extend up. Then I poke at the shape. They make bamboo joint, and then I connect. Um, yeah. So they come down. And then I play this diagonal. So, this diagonal is, ta is taking away the base of this black group. That's basically it. Um, and if black ignores, I can surround black, was the plan. I think it's calmer to just play down like this. Maybe poke at the shape first, and see how black wants to play. So maybe this was too slow, like away from the hot area, because black invaded here. Um, and then I played this one. Now, truthfully, I don't know why I played this one, because I can just play... Come on, mouse. Um, this one. And black cannot escape. Um, and so black would have to make two eyes, but there's no real way for black to make two eyes. Um, yeah, so not really sure what I was thinking of with my move. Yeah, there's, black can't make two eyes. So, yeah. Because in the game, where I played was here. Which let black Hane, and then I, he just had was able to connect. So, misread by me, playing too fast probably. Now this is a very important, not even Teisuji, but tactic. If you, if your opponent is peeping at your shape here, and they have a stone here, you have to cut across like this. Because if they cut you, then you can cut them, but notice this cut is now um, connected right and you have created a local fight whereas if you just protect and white comes back you can see white is completely connected if white wants to cut here then you can still connect and then you're out anyways so black has to play this one and if he wants to become a Don player he has to start playing this sort of tactic so then I come down so I should Hane, and the reason why is because if black Hanes, I can just connect, they have a cutting point, and then I can kill the corner, and they still don't have two eyes. Whereas if, so in the game when I went here, black played this knight's move and I had to connect. If I Hane instead, and black plays the knight's move, then I can play this move instead, right? Fixing. Preventing black from Haneing here, 
but putting more pressure on the cornerstones. So, minor mistake for white. Black tips across, and I connect. So you can see, without this zone being here as opposed to here, puts less pressure on the corner. And then black pushes here again. If black just does something like this, or something like this, you can see black has scooped out the entire point in the corner. Um, and there's no one move white can play to seal black in. Like if white does this one, black can just play here. So this move was bad by black. Black, If black's going to play all these moves, black should connect his stones. Because after this, when black goes here, I poke once, and then I jump across. So whenever your opponent has this double knights on the like on the side here, and you have a stone here and here, you can jump across. Because the point of this is if they come down, you can then jump across here. I mean, you can see they cannot cut you off because because you played this stone first, You can, this is a cut. So in this case, black would have to go here. But then white will just connect. And if black ignores to save this group, white can just kill in the corner. Um, so this would be bad for black. So in the game, black plays here. Now this move is bad because when white connects, look at what's look at white's shape in the corner. See how many points white has, and you can see black cannot do this because white can push through and cut these stones. So where should black have played? Black should go here. If white connects here, black can then play this Hane. And compared to the last diagram, you can see white has added two stones here, so it's a two-point loss for white compared to what happened in the game. So if white goes here, you can see black can then play here. And it's very similar to the last diagram, or the game, but white added a stone right here. So white has already lost one point, right? Because if we go back to the game, it's as if when black went here, white went here. Um, and you can see this is a better exchange for black, for sure. So you can see by going here, how many liberties does this stone have? It has, it has three. When black goes here and white connects, black stones still have three liberties. So black has not actually helped the, this stone at all. Whereas going here, you can see black has made, has extended his liberties to five. Um, so it's better for eye shape, it's better end game, it's just better all around. So this was a mistake by black. So black stands up here, because again, after this peep, like there's a cut here, and then black turns. So white can go here, and you can see Black Ataris this way and connects. Does not look like black can make two eyes, does it? Because white can just play here. Looks like black can't make two eyes. Um, but black can go this one. And even though this is a snapback, this move is an Atari. So black would need a fix, and then black would be able to connect all his stones. So even though I could capture the three, th three stones, I didn't know if I wanted to capture the three stones or keep black separated. So that's why in the game, I just turned my attention to the bottom. Now, what black should do is just, the two options bl black has against this move is to crawl or extend. If black crawls, Black can extend and helping this stone. Because when I show you the game move, my student was telling me he was afraid of this stone getting isolated if he just responded to white. But 
compare what happens in the game to black here, right? Black's getting the side, which means black is going to build the bottom, and white's still not even alive. So white should bump here. Uh, if black extends, white's able to cut here. Notice white couldn't cut immediately because if because black could connect. So by playing here first, white's seeing what black wants to do. But even if black just comes down, if white Hane is on top, black can come down, threatening to connect on the first line or on the second line, um, or coming out this way. So this would be good for black. If white Hane is on this side, black would then still extend up, threatening a cut here. So white can't be too aggressive because black would just cut. So white would need to extend, but then black can play here, and white's still not alive. And because of this, this move, it's it's not the connection here is not so clean for white. And even if white can connect on the second line, if black can get this move, black's bottom would build on a large scale. So that's so this move, and even if black extends up and white cuts, I don't think this is terrible for black if black Ataris or not. Just extends down. I don't think this is off. It's better than what happened in the game for sure. Uh, so yeah. The other option black had was extend up. If black extends up, um, white would jump. Um, and at this point, let's see, what would happen? Even if black just extends, White would what come down? Maybe black would poke, then maybe come down again. You can see white's very heavy. Um, if white extends this way, black would just turn. White would probably just extend up, but even still, um. I don't think this is terrible for black, is it? Again, if the bottom is what black is worried about, and the left side is, if black can fix both, black would be happy, even if black loses a little bit in the corner. In the game, my student went here, which again, he was worried about this, but after white jumps down, you can see this exposes the corner, but with this stone here, white can still split black. So, yeah, it's, I think even now black should just play here. It's a pretty big move, and since white has invested one stone, right, now these are two stones, white would be less inclined to just Tainuki after this, right? Um, so, in the game, my student went here, and then I threatened the scorpion. If I played the scorpion directly, I think black would just give up the, a little bit in the corner, force me to live small, and black has reduced incente. So I just turned once, and then Haneid. Um, if black cuts, even if I... I can just Atari this way. Um, and... Black's still not alive, and again, I'm reducing black's left side. So this would be pretty good. If black Hanes. Yeah, what would happen to black Hanes? White can cut. Maybe go here. Atari once. And then do this one. And you can see if black Atari's, white's able to play this co shape, which is connecting the shape in the corner. Um, if black plays here, white can just come down. And I think white wins this semi, right? Now black wins it. Let's see. So then bef after this one, white should Atari once. And then extend up. And now white, I believe, wins this semi. Yeah, white can extend once here. And then come down. You 
can see white will win this semi. -I. So pretty complicated, but you can see how this exchange really helps white. Conversely, white could just extend down, which would probably is probably a lot simpler. Um, Bacanes, Atari, and then come up. Yeah, this is much better than that. The last one's going to be pretty hard to read uh, for sure, like, especially with two amateurs. So this is much simpler. But basically, I think black should have cut. But in the game, black just took two, like f four points in the corner, um, and white still doesn't need to respond. It's pretty small. Uh, so I jump. There is follow-up, so it's not completely small, but black then should not have played this attachment to begin with. Um, so now I've decided I want to actually keep the group separated as opposed to capturing the three stones. And then attach. So this attachment, um, you can see what happens in the game. White scoops out the points, which is much bigger than anything that black did in on this side. Because now, with this extension being long, um, this group's in a lot of danger. Uh, so I think black could have cut or haned because I was going to counter hane but even if black just connects you can see white's corner is smaller and black's left side is much stronger but by just going here and letting white descend it's pretty good for white um, and then he plays here and sacrificed this one stone but I don't want to touch the bottom right because this is where I can potentially get points so I'd, I would just defend because um, it's very hard to build the center yeah Hane and yeah white's just taking all these points now then white goes here which um, black could have gone here and if white came down black could extend up and then come up again um, to cut all this off, so white would need to probably go here at this point. And yeah, it's actually a pretty good move for black, isn't it? So by going so, or even if black just were to extend and white went here, it's a pretty good exchange. But once white plays here, this sort of move doesn't work anymore. Um, and that comes up later. As you can see, when black descends, white can just connect. And now this connection and this Atari is Mii. So, so black plays here. White jumps in, threatening to come in on the left side. So black's still trying to build the left, but again, I, or the middle, but again, I'm like, oh, I can see that, so I just jump in. Wedge. Atari, Atari, Capture, and then Atari. Now, because now that these groups are connected, the value of these three stones has gone down a lot, so I just ignore and crawl here. If Black wants to take six points in Gote, I will let him. Um, as a rough count when you're counting the score, it's if a move's ever Gote, give the value as half as much. Like, compare... If black just didn't do any of that and just went here, that's pretty big, right? But after these oops, after these exchanges, um, and white crawls, you can see white's building the bottom left while reducing black. Yeah, painful. Push. And then peep. So this is because black could have done this, which is a pretty big end game by itself, right? But instead, black does this, which, oops, does this one, which you'll see saves saves this stone, but. 
black loses here, so I don't. I think black actually lost a few points there, because white getting this move actually reduces the corner. Um, but yeah, at this point, black's pretty far behind. Like I answered this, but I did not need to answer that. I could have gone anywhere, like on this side. Um, so yeah, at this point, black is pretty far behind, so black tries to do stuff here, threatening to cut this off. Pushes now. If black cuts. White can play this very nice Taisuji. Um and the point of this is, is it's saying going here or going here is Mii. So if black cuts white off, you can see black going here does not work because white can cut. So if that doesn't work, black can go here. But even if white turns or crawls, and black tries to Hane, white can, let's see, play this one directly, threatening this cut, and then white can cut. Um, so black would need to crawl, in which case white could crawl again, and it's just, white just takes these points even though white loses the two stones. So that's why in the game he goes here, but I feel like he shouldn't make any of those exchanges and should just come back. Plays down, and yeah, at this point, black tries to kill white, but you can see black can never falsify this side and can never take away this side, so white's alive. Plays there, threaten to poke first and then connect, and yeah, white just kind of squeezes black's points, and I ended up cap getting these stones anyways. And black turns, but since white's already alive, I just ignore and turn here, which is a bigger move. And then uh, black push, thinking he could cut, but black cannot actually cut because white can play this attachment and capture these two stones. So this move was pretty big. Um, so after this, um, my student resigned. Yeah, definitely too far behind at this point to catch up. But yeah, you can see how black just focusing on destroying what white's potential is. White ended up getting most of it anyways. Black ended up getting no points where he invaded. And white was able to just take out what black could build on the bottom and left side. So takeaways from this game, if you're going to play fast in the opening, you have to be willing to give up stones. Um, like, let's see. Um, like, after ignoring this, Black has to be thinking, okay, at this point, I have to be willing to treat these stones lightly. Um, and then playing the, a mistake here by connecting solidly was also not good for Black. So knowing your Josekis is always important, especially in the AI era, where the new Josekis are like game, like game deciding almost. Uh, but yeah, this exchange, making black heavier and white more solid. Like black could just, instead of jumping here, black could just build his own thing, right? But instead black was so focused on white. So that was the main takeaway, I think. Uh, Black was so focused on what White could build and not what his own th his own potential. Yeah, so this is what the board looked like. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it for this game. Uh, if you have any questions about this game, uh, please let me know. Um, I'm always I'm always uh, willing to help if you have any questions. And yeah, I'll yeah. The next uh, lecture video series, or the next the next lecture video in the series is going to be on. I don't even know what to call it. Like corner, Aji after the kick or something like that. I don't know, um, but yeah, definitely I think that's a good video for players who want to become Don players should know. And yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.